Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me today. My name is Nicole Herskowitz and I'm the General Manager of Microsoft Teams. As we're a year into remote work, we've learned a lot about what it means to adapt and transform. And we are humbled that Microsoft Teams has been here to help you on this journey. But we also know that how work is done will continue to change. And all of us are asking the same question. How do we thrive no matter where we work? This is the very challenge of what we're focused on with new innovation in Microsoft Teams. We're taking the best of both worlds, what worked in the physical space and in the digital space, and bring it together so that you can work in a way that works for you. And the best part is you don't need different apps or tools to do this. Everything that your team needs to connect, collaborate, and accomplish goals together is built directly in Microsoft Teams. Today, I will share three areas where we're driving new innovation. First, I'm gonna show you how meetings will adapt to meet your needs because they're not one size fits all. Next, we will help you show up as your best self and present confidently, whether in meetings, webinars, or large scale events. And finally, we're working hard to make it easy and more secure so that you can collaborate with people inside and outside of your organization. But before we jump in, let's start with how Microsoft Teams is empowering the new world of work. We used to go to the office. Now we go to Teams and achieve more together. Microsoft Teams is your digital workspace, helping people stay connected and collaborating no matter where they are, at home, on the go, or in the office. Teams meetings dynamically adapt to your needs, giving you an optimal experience no matter where you're joining from from small meetings to large-scale events. And for presenters, integrated presentation tools empower presenters to be their best selves so they can deliver with confidence and ease. And running a webinar has never been easier. With tools that help your presentation stand out, expanding your reach further than ever before. Teams breaks down the barriers of collaboration, allowing you to seamlessly and securely work on teams that span organizational boundaries. Teams enables us to work smarter, collaborate stronger, and connect deeper. Experience how Microsoft Teams is empowering the new way we work. I suspect one of the reasons you join me today is that you want to hear about meetings and how they can improve. Because if you're like me, you're in a lot of meetings. Meetings serve different purposes and various needs, and yet we've become far too accustomed to using the same formats and seeing them over and over, like grid views or a spotlight view of a speaker. Can you imagine the equivalent in the physical world? If you chose the same conference room to hold your meeting, whether it's a team brainstorming session, a customer presentation, or a company-wide town hall, it would simply feel like you didn't have the right environment to achieve your goal. That's why today I'm excited to announce the availability of Dynamic View, which automatically adjusts the meeting experience based on participants and content. So as people join, turn on their video, start to speak, or begin to present. Teams intelligently responds and personalizes your layout. And you still have the option to choose the view that works best for you, including gallery, large gallery, spotlight, and the new option with gallery at top that optimizes for eye contact. And let's not forget my personal favorite, together mode, where we always add new scenes for your unique meeting types. Now I'd like to share with you how Teams can help you when you are the presenter. I think we can all agree that presenting can be nerve wracking. Think of how many times you accidentally shared your desktop or the wrong screen instead of using your presentation, or when multiple presenters have awkward transitions as they try to switch control of the content. There's enough pressure to present, the technology should not make it harder. As a presenter, we're going to help you present with confidence and not worry about what you're sharing. And that's where the power of Microsoft Teams and PowerPoint come together in a way that no other online meeting experience can. 
I'm excited to announce PowerPoint Live in Teams, which offers a simple way to share your presentation. You can see what is seen by others, your speaker notes, your timing, your upcoming content, and a view of attendees all in one screen. You can seamlessly co-present using the same content without awkward switching. And if you choose, your participants can view the content at their own pace. But as a presenter, you may want to take your level of production quality and polish to the next level. Imagine a presentation that looks like it was produced in a studio, like the one you're watching now, except it's done right from your home and right within Teams, all with a click of a button. Today, I'm excited to introduce Presenter Mode, which allows you and your presentation to shine. Right from the Teams sharing tray, use Presenter Mode to upgrade from standard sharing to standout, bringing yourself in front of the content with a dramatic effect. Take control with fun professional layouts such as Reporter, or balance yourself and your content side by side. And one thing for sure, Presenter mode will beat the first impression of showing up as a cat. There is one area where presenters experience high stakes and require highly professional tools, virtual events. I say this to you in complete awareness that I'm currently delivering and you're experiencing this very thing. I'm with you. I'd like to show you how events of all types and sizes can be delivered with the ease and familiarity of Microsoft Teams. Let's start with the most commonly used format for a virtual event, a webinar. Webinars are a powerful way to engage directly with your customers, communities, and networks to showcase your business, but they shouldn't be complicated to deliver. You may be thinking you need a totally different set of tools and apps or an event agency expertise to get going, but that's not true. What if your webinar was just as easy as running your next Teams meeting? which is why I'm excited to announce webinars in Microsoft Teams. We've combined powerful capabilities for presenters and audience engagement with simple tools to set up, run, and market your webinar. Just as you would set up a meeting, set up your webinar with a custom registration experience. Automatically send invitations and have your attendees join with a simple meeting link. Your participants will not only be impressed as you show up in presenter mode, but they will engage in your webinar with live reactions that you would normally get from physically being together. They can interact with real-time polls to share immediate feedback and responses, and use chat or moderated Q&A to facilitate discussions and to share what's top of mind. And it's easy to minimize unwanted disruptions with moderation controls to disable attendee chat and video. After a webinar ends, use attendee reporting to understand participation. And because we know your relationship with customers goes beyond one event, we're taking the webinar experience a step further by integrating Teams webinars with Dynamics 365. With just a couple of clicks, you can deliver a range of marketing activities from basic follow-up communications to more sophisticated relationship marketing campaigns. And if you use another marketing platform, we make it easy for you to bring your event contacts with you. What if your webinar needs to reach hundreds to thousands of participants? With Microsoft Teams, you can host interactive webinars with up to 1,000 attendees and view only broadcasts with up to 20,000 attendees. But you want to know what's the best part of all of this new innovation? For those of you who are existing Office and Microsoft 365 customers today, webinars in Microsoft Teams is available with your existing E3 or Business Premium subscription. With all of this new value, it may be time to think about switching your provider. Now, webinars are a great way to engage your customers, but large global events have also gone virtual. Microsoft Teams can adapt to your events of all sizes and scale. And it's exciting to see how many of our customers have reimagined experiences with virtual events. Office Depot used Teams to host an online webinar for their retail leaders and external partners to recognize outstanding results all in a shared event space. 
With fans mostly watching from home this year, the NFL wanted to create high energy virtual game day experiences and worked with Microsoft to create fan mosaics for select primetime games. We partnered with NBC Sunday Night Football to highlight how Microsoft Teams enables fans to participate and celebrate on the virtual sidelines together. And for the first time ever, CES, the world's largest and most influential technology event, which attracts over 170,000 attendees in person, became an all digital global event. Leveraging the power of Teams combined with other Microsoft technology and our partner ecosystem, virtual attendees engaged in the live stream of session programming with keynotes, exhibitor showcases, press conferences, and networking events. Now I've shown you how virtual meetings and events are adapting and scaling to fit your needs. But collaboration extends far beyond meetings. Collaboration requires sustained, persistent relationships. It means working seamlessly in real time or asynchronously with anyone, whether inside or outside of your organization. In Teams, it's easy for me to spin up conversations and collaborate on content with people inside my organization. But as a marketer, I'm constantly planning for the next product announcements, like what you're seeing today. And I often rely on the support from agencies to help bring our vision to life. Today, I'm excited to announce Microsoft Teams Connect, which enables you to share channels with people and teams outside of your organization. Just like when you add a channel in Teams today, you simply select a new channel type. Easily invite individuals and teams and create a shared workspace where you can collaborate across organizational boundaries, leveraging all the rich capabilities that only Teams brings together. So you can chat, meet, collaborate on apps, share content, and even co-author documents in real time with people outside of your organization and shared channels appear in your primary Teams view alongside all of your internal Teams and channels, making it easy to stay on top of all of your work in one place. Collaborating across organizational boundaries doesn't mean you have to give up protection of your company's most important assets. Regardless of how and where work happens, you shouldn't have to compromise the safety of your people and data. Think about how often a meeting has been forwarded to attendees who weren't invited or when an uninvited person has joined only to be disruptive. Can you imagine an in-person boardroom meeting or a sixth grade math class where an unapproved participant joins? This is why I'm excited to introduce Invite Only Meeting Controls, which helps ensure that only participants who were directly invited to the meeting are able to attend. And there are times when highly sensitive conversations are happening in your organization. Think of when you review financial data or discuss a confidential new product launch. You want to ensure that what is discussed stays between people in the conversation. So today we're announcing end-to-end -end encryption to provide extra protection for these conversations while giving you full control of who can use this capability across your organization. We're starting with one-to-one -one audio and video calls in Teams and will extend end-to-end -end encryption capabilities to support Teams online meetings next. It is our commitment to continue partnering with our customers to support more secure and trustworthy communications and collaboration. It is our job to build Teams so that you can focus on what matters, being you. Whether it's enabling meetings to adapt to your needs, helping you be a more confident presenter, supporting the delivery of webinars and virtual events, or making it easier to collaborate with people inside and outside of your organization. Microsoft Teams is designed to help your team stay connected, collaborate, and achieve more together, no matter where you work. So whether you're teaching in a classroom, delivering vaccines to patients, or running a business, Microsoft Teams is right there with you. With that, we'd like to end with something that gives our team the most inspiration, how our customers around the world are using Microsoft Teams.
There are so many different lines of work from manufacturing to R&D to sales. Teams is helping us reimagine business by becoming the central place where all work gets done. Microsoft Teams has enabled daily stand-ups occurring on the plant floor, supplier product and plant walkthroughs happening completely virtual. We want the highest quality of teaching and learning taking place. We've got an assembly being streamed out or a lesson being delivered. It's all there in one location in Microsoft Teams. We've been able to start practicing telesurgery. Technology allows us to have surgeons operating with Uganda completely connected with surgeons here in Mount Sinai. We have had a 100% success rate and it's unbelievable. We are so pleased to be able to do this fun session with you today. We actually have the real life Teams marketing team together. And our hope today is we can show you a little bit about what culture means to us and how we've been using Microsoft Teams to shape that culture. This is off the cuff, it's real. None of these people today are actors, we're just the team showing you a little bit about what we do. I've got Barbara, Chris, Deandra, Marissa, and Amber and myself. Um, and we're each just gonna talk um, a little bit about what we've learned, especially in the past year. And I'll start with one thing that continues to amaze me every day I go to work, which is this idea we have real bonded connections and many of us have never actually met each other in person. Uh, we have used this last year to try new things, to experiment and to bond in a way that may have not been traditional or comfortable with us at the time, but somehow, some way it's actually working. And we wanted to kind of share some of those tips and tricks. And uh, I think we just have to start with culture, culture at the center. And so maybe Barbara, you can you can give us a little bit of our tips and tricks on what have we been doing with culture. Thanks, Lars. I mean, um, we think about how just overnight we thought we were going to be just at home working remotely and coming into the office once in a while for like a week, and it turned into like almost a year. And we quickly realized, like, gosh, tech is one of the aspects of the solution, but we have got to reestablish our organization and sustain a remote work in a cultural way. And so we started to actually implement listening tours. And then we started to listen to, hey, how are you guys doing? Because so much of our engagement was work-based. We actually didn't know how people were doing and what are the some of the life circumstances that were happening. And when we did the listening tour, it was very clear that people were feeling like there was no work-life balance anymore because I don't know where work is. I'm like living in the workplace or I'm I'm trying to take care of my children in the workplace. It's a very bizarre thing. But I think what we realized is that we had to really be intentional about establishing who are we as an organization? How do we how do we have a culture of gratitude? How do we have a culture that appreciates people's boundaries? So I, I remember um, when we started to try out from these listening tours, like, let's block off Friday meetings. Let's block off lunch meetings. And then um, even like in our team, we started to do these like Harry Potter houses, like, hey, you're, you guys get Gryffindor points. And um, it was a fun way for us to say, hey, we don't have to do all work connections. We can actually have fun. And and then quickly we realized like I was making some of my best friends during the pandemic and I haven't even met them in person. We're always trying to say like, hey, when can we meet up? And even our virtual happy hours that turned into three hours, four hours, like who does that? People don't want to be virtually connecting. But it was very clear that when we started to take action items for making an intentional connection that was organic, that appreciated each other, we can still make meaningful connections even in the workplace using Teams. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, Barbara, to your point, like being, being intentional about things, it, it's a key word here. Um, I think to your point, working remote, it can be challenging. And honestly, like even when we're in the office, sometimes it was hard to figure out, you know, what are people doing? 
uh, who who's having a work anniversary soon? And honestly, who got engaged? Because, you know, those are the, the moments that I feel like are opportunities for us to come together. And I think Teams offers a little bit of that technology, again, to be able to enable us to connect for, for, for those specific scenarios. But I think it's to come together and form that culture, to your point, that allows us to have those discussions. Um, when I think about some of the things that we have done in the team to, to come together and, and celebrate, um, it can be small things like creating a channel where people can have informal conversations, share their thoughts, share their what's happening with them. Managers can uh, post happy birthdays or work anniversaries. Uh, Colleagues can post that they just got a new puppy. Like, Barbara, I loved your puppy. Uh, love the pictures. Love to see them in camera every time we can. Um, but it's, it's just being authentic in, in that specific channel. Um, of course, meetings is also another great opportunity for, to come together. Um, I can think about a couple of times where we had a role of big features, and it's a big uh, enterprise for us to come together and, and celebrate the fact that we made it happen. And being able to feel accomplished, uh, have make, make fun of some of the interesting pieces of, of the journey, and honestly just um, feel comfortable remembering some of these big pieces. It, it, it's key. Um, another piece that is it's super important in, in those specific scenarios is how do you make people feel appreciated? Um, I think in scenarios, for example, where you're working together to deliver something, sometimes even especially in remote scenarios, we, we forget to tell other people, hey, thank you for the amazing work. You did me a solid, like, you saved my life. Those, that appreciation helps people feel recognized and ultimately happy in the work environment. And using things like praise in a channel so people can see the great work that others are doing for you um, is a great way to do that too. Yeah, I love that, Chris. And a word that you said that really stuck out to me is just authenticity. Those moments when you just can be authentic and be yourself with your team. That was something that I used to love doing at the water cooler when you'd go grab coffee and get lunch. And when we switched to a more virtual world, it's honestly something I was a little bit nervous about around, but it's been really just relieving to see our team come together and be very intentional around how do we still have these, you know, team building moments and these moments of just serendipitous connectivity and laughter virtually online. Some things that our team has put together, which have been a blast are things like team trivia. Our team is super competitive. And so we're all trying to win and we're just having fun and getting to know, you know, like, wow, I didn't know so-and-so was an office expert or this person is really strong at this. So it's been really fun to get to learn more about one another. We also did uh, a cooking class together as a group, and that was really telling around who's been ordering a lot of food during this time versus who's become, you know, master chefs. So it's been really fun to connect in that way, or even like a gingerbread making contest. That was a great way. We brought all of our, um, you know, families involved. Some people had their parents, other had their kids, and it was just a great way to be able to bring our families into the workplace and just genuinely connect and, and have fun together. Wait, Deandra, do you have that photo you can share from our Halloween event? Yes, I have to show you guys. It is too hilarious to this day. We Mom, talk about all the different costumes. <laughs> Let me just pull it up here. If there's two things that we have, it is great pictures of ourselves in together mode and knowledge of each other's pets. <laughs> the pets have become <laughs> the stars of the show. Yes. In the last year. Yes. Yes, and, and that's the hilarious thing. I'm sharing my screen now. Let me know if you guys are able to see it. We have Lars here who we're still trying to kind of figure out what costume he was doing. <laughs> and then we have, you know, unicorns, um, you know, just different fun backgrounds. It's just fun you know these are the moments where you can let your hair down and just have some fun and just connect outside of you know your projects and your meetings so these are the moments that we still talk about till today and and we'll probably never forget we didn't <laughs> talk about showing that but you know what we're getting real <laughs> in this session That's, it's all good. i think that that example is such a great um kind of proof point for the fact that like yeah every time we come together these days it's done on teams but in real life, not every meeting is the same. Like a Halloween happy hour is a very different setting and experience and you're in a really different mood than you are when you're coming into you know, a, a formal presentation or, or something like that. And so we think a lot about 
hey, how do we make people comfortable in this setting and feel like you're entering the right meeting room? Uh, it's, you know, to kind of kind of set that stage. So I feel like we're really big as a team's team on using the different, uh, you know, tools and features and tricks within teams to kind of set the scene and, and make it feel like the right meeting. Like if we're brainstorming on a storyboard, it seems so simple, but just something as simple as pulling up the whiteboard, the Microsoft whiteboard changes the tone and helps people, you know, feel comfortable adding ideas or together mode kind of in a more, um, you know, meeting context. If we're having a round table discussion and you want to take out the distraction of shared content, you want to take out the distraction of people's backgrounds, I pop us together in together mode and we can focus on each other and each other's faces and have a bit more of a natural conversation. I think we all felt that so much. I mean, remember um, through last summer when we started to say, hey, when you're in meetings all day, they need to feel different. They need to, you got to switch it up. We can't be in these boxes all the time. We're either brainstorming, we're together, we're doing all sorts of different things. A one-on-one -on -one will feel so, so different if you're taking the time to look the other person in the eye like they're in the same room. And um if you can get them to turn on the camera, of course, that is. Well, can you imagine if we were doing this conversation without cameras? Like the fact that I get to see all of your beautiful smiling faces. <laughs> I mean, you all know I'm a people person. I get my energy off people. So like this is the next best thing than being together. Uh, and it just there's something about being able to see everybody, you know, kind of really, really get those real, you know, nonverbal cues that you wouldn't see otherwise, like being together in a room. It just creates some some bit of this openness and just feeling like we have these real connections. Um, and then of course, like we we're saying, I mean, it's awesome. Look at it. I feel like, you know, I'm getting a little bit of warm invitation in your home a bit. I'm seeing everybody at their home. I'm here, obviously not. I'm in Greece. Okay. Cause I don't want to be at home <laughs> right now in quarantine, but, uh, but it's just awesome just to kind of see that personal side of folks. And, you know, we get to have those special guests too, like we said from time to time, whether it's kids or, you know, puppies like Barbara's puppy, Toby, hopefully will make an appearance at some point. Uh, but it's just been really great. Marissa is showing us how to be polite with team etiquette by raising her hand. And so I guess you have a comment about that, Marissa. Well, I do. And I also just use that to kind of make a point of it's when you have your cameras on, it's so much easier to naturally kind of interrupt people and have like a back and forth flow instead of the awkwardness of, OK, now I'm finished talking, you may enter, it, it gives you a little bit more free flow that you have in person when you're able to read each other's body language. And, you know, talking over each other doesn't seem as rude. Uh, you know, you can you can react, you can see people smile, you can, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't even pay attention. To that. <laughs> Barbara, here you are being rude and just stealing the whole show with our newest, our newest member of the team's team. You've got to introduce the newest member. Since everyone talks about Toby so much, this is Toby. Oh, Toby. Hi, Toby. Gentle pup. <laughs> Hi, Toby. I, I oh, hope Toby God. is feeling the hearts that we just <laughs> sent Toby's away. Um, you know, the, it, it's it's so true. Could you imagine without being able to look at each other? in their, you know, adapting environments with all of the great things that are happening in each other's lives. And, you know, I think that's kind of one of my last insights, which is we all can't wait to see each other in person. Of course we, like, it'll be so magical when we get to bond together in person. But one of the things that we've learned on this team is that we shouldn't be waiting. We should be adapting and embracing this time like there's a lot of really really special things that are happening right now and so to declare that hey this remote space that we're going to be working from let's get comfortable even if we start having more time in the office like let's use it to the best of our ability let's get our cameras set up in a way that we can and our sound and our home environment so that we can really continue to enjoy, quite frankly, what has been a surprise for all of us. So I know we're running out of time. I know this is not uh, an interview that we can take the rest of the day on, but um, I am so thankful for every member of this team and how we've adapted. And I hope you've all enjoyed just getting a quick glimpse in how we work together. Thank you.
can we do some waves, team? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 